So we'll proceed, uh, Ms. Mitchell. Dr. Ford, um, we're almost done. Um, just a couple cleanup questions. First of all, which which of your two lawyers did Senator Feinstein's office recommend? Uh, the Katz. I'm the sorry. Ka um, the Katz firm. Okay. And when you when you did leave that night, did Leland Kaiser, now Kaiser, ever follow up with you and say, "Hey, what what happened to you?" Uh, I've had communications with her recently. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like the next day. Or oh, no. She didn't know about the event. She was downstairs during the event, and I did not share it with her. Okay. Have you been, a, are you aware that the three people at the party besides yourself and, and Brett Kavanaugh have given statements under penalty of felony to the committee? Yes. And are you aware of what those statements say? Yes. Um, are you aware that they say that they have no memory or knowledge of such a party? Yes. Do you have any particular motives to ascribe to Leland? I guess we could take those one at a time. Um, Leland has uh, significant health challenges, and I'm happy that she's focusing on herself and getting the health treatment that she needs. And she let me know that she needed her lawyer to take care of this for her. And she texted me right afterward with an apology and good wishes and et cetera. So I'm glad that she's taking care of herself. Um, I don't expect that PJ and Leland would remember this evening. It was a very unremarkable party. It was not one of their more notorious parties um, because nothing remarkable happened to them that evening they were downstairs. And Mr. Judge is a different story. Um, I would expect that he would remember that this happened. Understood. Um, Senator Harris just questioned you from the Maricopa County Protocol on Sexual Assault. That, that's the paper she was holding up. Um, are you aware that, I, and you know, I've, I've been really impressed today because you've talked about norepinephrine and cortisol and what we call in the profession um, basically the neurobiological effects of trauma. Have you also um, educated yourself on the best way to get to um, memory and truth in terms of interviewing victims of trauma? For me, interviewing victims of trauma? No, to, oh. the best way to do it, the, the best practices for interviewing victims of trauma. No. Um, would you believe me if I told you that there's no study that says that this setting in five minute increments is the best way to do that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll stipulate for we that. We can stipulate for that. <laughs> Thank you, counsel. <laughs> Agreed. Um, did you know that the best way to do it is to have a trained interviewer talk to you one on one in a private setting and to let you do the talking, just let you do a narrative? Did you know that? That makes a lot of sense. Does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yes. And then to follow up, obviously to fill in the details and, and ask for clarification. Does that make sense as well? Yes. And, and the research is done by a lot of people in the child abuse field. Uh, two of the more prominent ones in the sexual assault field are Giesel and Fisher, who've talked about it. And it's called a cognitive interview. This is not a cognitive interview. Um, did anybody ever advise you from Senator Feinstein's office or from Representative Eshoo's office to go get a forensic interview? No. Instead, you were advised to get an attorney and take a polygraph. Is that right? Many people advised me to get an attorney. Um... Once I had an attorney, my attorney, and I discussed using the polygraph. And instead of submitting to an interview in California, we're having a hearing here today in five-minute increments. Is that right? I, I agree. That's what was agreed upon by the collegial group here. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Uh, I have